A long time ago, one of you asked me to take you step by step through the construction of Evanston on my N-scale layout. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at the progress I've made so far at Evanston, and we're going to take a look at what I still have to do. Hi, I'm Roy Smith. On this channel, we get to share the world's greatest hobby, model railroading. I'm surrounded by my N-Scale Union Pacific Evanston subdivision layout, as you can see. This is where I apply the techniques that I talk about on this channel. Today we're going to take a close look at what I've done so far and what I still have to do at Evanston on my layout. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's get started. On the prototype, the city of Evanston is located in southwestern Wyoming, about six miles from the Utah border. It has a population of slightly over 12,000. You can see it here on a map circled in red. You can also see Green River circled in blue. Green River is located 85 miles east of Evanston, and it is at the center of operations of my layout. The Union Pacific Evanston subdivision begins at Green River and runs west through Evanston to Ogden, Utah. In the past, Evanston was a major railroad center because it is located near the top of the Wasatch grade in Utah, and steam engines and helpers had to be serviced after such a grueling climb. But after the transition from steam to diesel, the railroad complex at Evanston lost much of its importance and railroad jobs at Evanston were transferred to the much larger yard at Green River. On my layout, Evanston is located on a peninsula. The peninsula measures six and a half feet long by nearly three feet wide. A scenic divider separates Evanston on one side of the scenic divider from Echo Canyon, Utah on the other side. In fact, the end of the divider represents the boundary between Wyoming and Utah. I've laid the track, I've installed some structures, about half of which will be replaced, and I've installed a photographic backdrop. Underneath, a helix with a 2% grade takes westbound trains down to tracks representing Ogden, Utah in the staging yard. That's what I've done so far, which is very little, but let's talk about the things I still have to do. Let's talk about track, wiring, ballasting, structures, scenery, and operations. Two previous versions of Evanston were too small to be operationally interesting. So I extended the peninsula on which Evanston is located by 18 inches and drew up this third track plan. Then I reconstructed Evanston based on this track plan. Will this be my final version of the track work at Evanston? I don't know, but I certainly hope so. We model railroaders almost never seem to have enough space to do what we would like to do. The track plan includes four spurs for the Union Tank Car Company, two industrial spurs, an interchange track used in conjunction with a Y to the Pocatello subdivision, and the Y itself leading to the Pocatello subdivision through a hole in the scenic divider. As you can see, the main line is double tracked, just like the prototype. I can use the two main line tracks for running trains in opposite directions at the same time. However, I can also use main two, the inside main shown in red, for yard operations if I want to. When I do that, main one handles both eastbound and westbound traffic. All right, let's talk about wiring. Right now, there is only one drop feeder providing current to all of the tracks in Evanston Yard. 
naturally I'm going to install drop feeders on every segment of track in the yard. I will do that when I'm absolutely sure that this is the final track arrangement for the yard. I use Cato terminal unit joiners for all of my drop feeders. The drop feeders connect to barrier strips under the layout and in turn the barrier strips are connected to the bus wires. Just like with the wiring, I will ballast the track when I am absolutely sure that this is my final arrangement of track in the yard. I will need to operate the yard over a period of time to be sure that it is. As you can see, I have installed cork roadbed between the tracks before applying ballast to reduce the apparent height of the Caddo unit track in the yard. I will need to paint the track and the cork roadbed a dark gray color before ballasting it. Right now I'm focused mostly on the structures at Evanston. Let's take a look at what I've done so far. First, the Union Tank Car Company. The UTCC on my layout is loosely based on the prototype at Evanston and is a very, very compressed version of it. The UTCC leases out tank cars and provides repair and maintenance for them. One of the two structures representing the UTCC, the red one, is a placeholder. I'm going to replace it with this kit. I will need to paint both buildings to match the color of the prototype. I've created two industries further back along the scenic divider. These are fictional and don't exist on the prototype. They exist on my layout to provide for some industrial switching. Now let's talk about the former Union Pacific Railroad complex at Evanston. Major buildings in the complex include a roundhouse, a machine shop, and a power plant, all of which were built during the period 1912 to 1918. In the 1970s, the complex was deeded to the city of Evanston, except for the power plant, which is still owned by the Union Pacific. The city of Evanston is renovating these historical buildings and uses them for events such as model train shows. This is what the complex looks like so far on my layout. These are the kits I'm using for the railroad complex. First for the machine shop and for the roundhouse. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I've got room for the power plant. And there is the former Union Pacific Depot or passenger station. This is a view of the side facing the track on the prototype. And this is the side facing the street. This Gothic style building was built in 1901. The Union Pacific donated it to the city of Evanston in 1989. The city uses it as a community center for public meetings and events such as weddings. Note the gardens. I plan to try to create something like this on my layout. Let's take a closer look at the station on my layout. This is the kit I'm using for the passenger station because it closely matches the prototype. Finally, let me mention the highway bridge. It's made from a Rick's Products kit. It serves to hide a hole through the scenic divider that leads to the Pocatello subdivision. And here's a photo taken from the prototype of the highway bridge at Evanston. There won't be a lot of three-dimensional scenery on this part of my layout, but let me mention the photo backdrop once again. The scenes for the backdrop were taken along Highway 89 just north of Evanston, and the street scenes you see on the backdrop came from downtown Evanston. The hills appearing on my photo backdrop can be seen in this photo taken from the yard at Evanston. Operations at Evanston on my layout will take place at the Union Tank Car Company, the two fictional industries, and the interchange track. I will continue to run operations at Evanston to test the track arrangement before doing the final wiring and ballasting. I'm going to put together an operations video for you as soon as I can. 
In the meantime, I'm going to try to make more progress on the structures at Evanston. I certainly hope you will come back for that video, and I hope this video, showing you what I've done so far and what I plan to do, will be of some value to you as you continue to work on your own layout. I would really love to know what you guys think. Do you just turn to the next thing that needs to be done on your layout? Or do you first make a list of things to do? Let me know in the comments section down below. If this is your first time here, I would also love to have you subscribe because I have tons of ideas for future videos that you won't want to miss. Until next time then, thanks for watching and happy railroading.